As I like to do with all these projects, I like to show you what uh, will be required to get the job done. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but by and large, uh, some gloves would be good. I don't have those. A 32 millimeter socket. This is actually 36. So you're going to see me use channel locks and you're all going to gasp and guffaw, but uh, I thought I ordered one and I didn't and I need to get this done. In the uh, replacement, the oil kit, I got a kit from one of the companies, I don't remember which. It's gonna take about five and a half quarts, so I get uh, actually five and a half liters, I wanna say. So this is a five liter tub and this is another liter, so definitely enough there to uh, replenish the oil. Here's the filter, HU6013Z, which is uh, this guy plus the ring. And then in that kit does come a replacement plug. And what's pretty neat about these plugs is they have a couple of threads and then they basically lock into place and you can feel the click. And so uh, you just replace that every time. And this kit, I wanna say it was about 60 to $70 with, you know, decent oil, let's say, and a 5W40 and liquid molly. I also have this man filter FP26009, which I'm gonna flip out and switch out because I, uh, I think it's definitely worth doing. I don't know when it was last done and it's supposed to be done every year. So I'm gonna guess that hasn't been done either. So I have this flathead screwdriver. I'm hoping I can get into the release here. This is the uh, oil pan, obviously, in plastic. I know some people do replace these for metal versions. Uh, not really thinking I'm there yet, so we'll not worry about that today. The engine is cold and the oil is cold, so it'll take a little longer to come out. I would normally recommend putting a little bit of heat through the engine, but since I don't have my ECU, I don't really don't want to turn the car on. So let's uh, see how this goes. So yeah, just turn unscrews like a screw and hopefully we don't get too much splutter. It's starting to come, but I probably need to relocate this just a little bit. dramatic for once. So as you can see, nothing special there. That oil, I mean, I've seen cleaner, so definitely thinking it's due. Yeah, all right. Now's the time. So I'm gonna go up top now, release the filter, replace that, get that all set up, and then we can uh, start thinking about refilling. Remove this cover. Gives us better access to the filter housing here, wherein the filter will be. We will be refilling this back here. And then here's the filter itself. Here's this, which we will want to lubricate with the new oil or some oil in order that it seats better and doesn't uh, you know, get brittle or anything while it's in there. Like I said, you need a 32 mil socket ordinarily. So anyone that doesn't like the look of this should turn away now, avert your eyes. All right, so it's released. I get it. Not ideal to use these channel locks. I get it, I get it. But once it's broken loose, you can do the rest by hand. And these things aren't that expensive to replace. So there's the housing. We'll remove the old filter and we will uh, replace the gasket. I'd ordinarily do this over a bench, but it's better for you to see what's happening. So we just remove the filter here. Everything looks okay with that. Normally there's a little place you can get a flathead screwdriver or pick in my case in behind there. And you can see the channel where that runs through right at the very bottom of the housing here. Just gonna dunk the new gasket in here. Oil is green, how cool is that? And then just coat the rest. So it's now seated on there. Place on the new filter. I think it's omnidirectional, meaning it doesn't matter which way up we put it in there. And everything looks okay in there. Th 
thread slowly at first to make sure you get the ideal threading. Let's get this greasy glove off. Now, it does say 25.5 Newton meters, so if all you pros that have the socket can get your torque wrench on there and tighten that down. I find if you go as hard as and tight as you can with your hand, that tends to be just fine. So we've made it pretty much to a trickle here. I think it's probably good enough. We are a level. I mean, the car is level, so pretty good there. So, it's, it's probably hard to pick up here, but there is just this little section here, like a lip on the new screw, the replacement drain plug, and it just sits nicely in there. So you know there's no torquing or anything, you literally just turn the screw feature in until you hit that, and it's all sealed up down here and ready for oil up top. Cool little uh, pouring feature here, it seems like. So you get to something of a nozzle and these liquid molly, at least the large jugs. And now you, hopefully you can make that out. That's, that's green like the canister. We're gonna go to five and a half liters. Unlike a lot of cars these days, we still do have a dipstick. So I'm gonna pour this whole jug in and then I'll get a little bit more refined when we get to the next one. I'll speed you through this because I can imagine how fun it is watching uh, paint dry and oil pour. Give this dipstick a check. Well, you can see it's green down there, so that's a good start. It's kind of like, what was that ghost's name in Ghostbusters? It's that color, almost that consistency too, at least how you imagine it to be. All right, so we're about, man, probably super tough to see, but I would say three quarters of the way up. So I'm using the dimples on the stick here to identify right here to where the top is. So put a little bit more in, but I'm sure it would be fine if we left it right here too. But more is better, more lubrication. All right, that's about half of it. We'll give it another check. Yeah, we're full, so that's good. Replace your filler cap for obvious reasons. It's all tight, that's tight. We're locked up underneath. Only thing to do now, reset the timer on the oil replacement. So you can reset the oil light using VCDS or OBD11, but I wanted to show if you don't have those tools, how to do it in the car. So I'm gonna hold down our zero zero button here, push the accessory button. And then let go and push it again. The service was reset. Oil change in 365. I'm gonna go over infotainment screen, lots of messages, doors are open, oil change in 365. As you saw from earlier, before that was 15 days. All right, that's one, that's two. And you see that comes all the way down. You're gonna notice this guide. When we go to reinstall, we're gonna make sure it sluts through there. 
here's the doorway we need to get into. At the top of here are three firm plastic clips that need to be pushed down. That will allow us to tilt back, lift up, and remove this dusty fella. Notice the orientation facing down, which will be uh, important when we go to put in the new one. We want to make sure it's doing the same thing. Let's see if we can get this guy out of here. All right, good, it was a charcoal filter. Actually, not in terrible shape. So here's our new one, arrow facing down. We'll work that in. Very straightforward there. Replace the door. Uh, holes here in the bottom. So once that's in, angle it, push and clip it on all three points. Now we will work the draw back in, remembering to uh, take uh, this hinge and feed it through. Just like that, you have an oil change, cabin filter, really good preventive maintenance and just general maintenance. Keep your car happy and keep your nose happy. So there you have it, pretty easy oil change, cabin filter, life is good, right? Thanks for checking in everyone, be memorable, be well, and we'll see you on the next episode, hopefully, bye now.